Hey guys. What's up? It switched to me. There we go. <laughs> That's better. All right. What's going on, guys? We are here on the Upper Mississippi River, up uh, north of Lacrosse, actually. Got my boy Cade Mega Hammer, aka Mega Hammer, and uh, Cade. Pronounce your last name for him. Lothenberg. Lothenberg. I would have butchered that really bad. So here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're going live, and we're gonna do a little 25 minute or so bass challenge. And I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna beat him. We pulled up on this bank right here. We haven't fished down this bank, and uh, we're gonna be catching some big smallmouth. Hopefully, some big largemouth, and possibly even a toothy critter like a pike or something. So that's the challenge, guys. And also, be loading up your questions. Uh, we'll answer some questions along the way. You guys can shoot at me. Brandon's going to hopefully uh, ask those questions, and we'll have a lot of fun, guys. So do me a favor also. If you like this video, share it. Appreciate all the support, and let's get after it. Oh, that was, that was cheap. I thought we were talking about the rules. Oh, the rules? The rules are... The rules are... You cast on a bed fish before the, the I'm big, even ready? The biggest fish wins. <laughs> That's the rule. Big, biggest fish wins. Not most fish, because you like catching small ones. See, I'm not, I'm not challenging you for like the most fish because you only like start jacking up eight inchers. I'm looking for the biggest fish, whether it's a smallmouth or a largemouth. Man, you're shady. No. <laughs> that was, that was a low blow, man. You threw right in on my, my hole. <laughs> and you notice how I'm fishing with a bait caster, and Cade's fishing with, uh oh, oh, oh no. man, one hit it. Oh no. Oh, I missed him. Okay, good. Cade's fishing with a spinner rod. I'm fishing with a bait caster. And um, we're fishing the shoreline here on the Mississippi River, which is really neat. The smallmouth and the largemouth get up real shallow and spawn. So I'm just actually flipping a little creature bait. Got 20 pound P line fluorocarbon, eighth ounce sinker. That's real important. You want a real light weight because the bottom's kind of soft in a lot of places on this river. So you, you, if you flip like a real heavy weight, it's going to get down in the mud and the fish can't find it. So a real light weight. Of course, a Trocar TK-130 straight shank and, uh, you know, big old heavy rod. And we're basically just going down here, flipping the backs of these docks. If there's a stump in the water, a little rock pile, anything that you can visibly see, just pitching it up there and hopefully we'll catch a few fish. <laughs> oh, no! What happened? Did you miss one? Yeah. I don't know if that was her, though. I felt kind of bluegilly. Yeah, I had a bluegill bite, too. Someone said they'd give us $200 if I start to kick you into the water. <laughs> Give me two hundred dollars. You give you give me two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, giant. Oh, All right. Look at that. So Look the at bar that. has been set. Yes, the bar has been set. Oh. You got to give me weight on that. One pound. I wouldn't give you a pound oh, on come that. Come on, we got to round up. Come on, eleven ounces. Eleven ounces. <laughs> really, no love over here. <laughs> That's eleven ounces more than you have, my friend. That is correct. Can't say I've ever weighed a bass of that stature. Yeah. What does loser have to do, by the way? Loser has to eat the other person's lure. I'll eat a little piece of a Ned rig, and you got to eat a, you got to eat this uh, Zoom crawdad. The problem is, it'd be kind of nasty, like later on when you go to the bathroom and you got like, you yeah. know, a Ned rig coming out or a crawdad with his legs out. I think that's a bad idea. As I just want to beat Mega Hammer. Trouble hook. I just want to beat Mega Hammer. I'm casting over your line. Ain't the Bassmaster Classic, man. <laughs> Someone said he has to eat the spinning worm. Eat the spinning worm. He'd probably die if he did that. He would. Yeah. He would. He would. So, you know, what's really funny is that, and cool at the same time, is that we've been getting a lot, or Brandon's been getting a lot of messages lately, people catching big fish on the spinner worm. What, you can't hear? No audio or just bad audio? No audio or bad audio? Um, Brand, we can't hear Scott. Low audio. Low audio. What if I do? Hmm. How about that? How about now? You got me better now? See, we should have tested all these things. How, how's the audio now, guys? Can you hear me good? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I'm getting mixed. I'm getting bad saying, audio. I'm saying perfect audio. I'm seeing. <laughs> it, 
I think it just depends on what you're listening to. Yeah, with. If, if it's low audio, I would suggest turning your monitor up <laughs> or turning your phone up. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with that. But look, no, here's, here's what we're doing. We're just literally throwing our baits right up super shallow. I mean, you can't tell how shallow that is, but it's like a foot deep right there. And we caught some earlier that shallow, so I'm sure we're going to potentially catch a few this shallow going this way. So, I'm over your line. Man, you got, you got, uh oh, what is that? Oh, that's a hole. Oh, man. It's all right. Are, are you off? Yeah. Come on, man. You're talking to Mega Hammer. Mega Hammer? Mega Hammer doesn't stay on snags. Oh, yeah, look at that cast right there, guys. You're pulling out the juice. Oh, man. I'm gonna make you cry. I can read those comments at the speed it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna put no, five pounder in the boat and be done with it. No flip flops. No flip flops. I, you know what? I gotta get a new pair of flip flops because I ha I've been wearing my reefs lately, but I think I've worn them so much. You might have a fish underneath yours. I just saw something wake up. I've been wearing them so much, they, they're all of a sudden not comfortable. So I don't know if I've worn them out or what, but I gotta get some, some new flip flops. What flip flops do you guys like? Huh? What brand should I check out? I like the reefs. Those are usually pretty comfortable. I think you should rock Crocs and socks. Yeah? Yeah. Crocs and socks? Yeah. You look good, man. Huh. <laughs> Brandon's got a pair of Crocs. He's got like a special kind of pair. Here's Brandon's shoes. This, what is it? Everybody want to know what Brandon's shoes look like? This is exclusive to SMC Live. Oh, gosh. This SMC is Live. Very comfortable. Yes. And they, this got attacked. What happened there? Baylor. It's my dog ate his shoe. Too man, he needs new shoes, bro. Bad. That happens when you run in the mud. That's a bad situation. I don't want to run in the mud while disc golfing. All right, I'm going to have you take the trolling motor because okay. I. I, I do don't need wanna, new I shoes. If y'all want to donate to the Brandon I'll Needs New Shoe Fund, go ahead. <laughs> the Brandon Shoe Fund. So look, here's a tip, because I want in this live video, guys, I want to give you guys some good entertainment, but at the same time, we want to give you guys tips. So when the fish are spawning, you want to fish a little slower than you normally would. So like I'm I'm throwing this creature bait out there and I'm letting it hit the bottom. And I'm, and I'm just pulling it just a little bit. I'm not trying to like pull it too far. Basically, just get it out there like that. And I'm just gonna move it just a little bit because, and I wanna try to keep bottom contact. I don't wanna swim it way high in the water column. I want it just to drag along the bottom because you've got a better chance of it getting into a bass bed. When it gets in the bed, that's when those fish really get aggressive on it. I bet they can hear that train. I don't need J's. <laughs> J's? Hey, if y'all want to donate some Yeezys to me. <laughs> Stick with the finesse. The finesse. finesse. Yeah, right? what was that, Scott? yeah, just keep going down this inside of this dock. Yeah. Alright, this comment's been asked like eight times. Okay, what's the comment? What do you do if uh, if you're on tournament days, someone is on your spot you really like during practice before you get there, or spot two or three? Well, here's the deal. If somebody's there already, and it's the first day of the tournament, then that's their spot, right? I mean, if it's a big area, you can ask the other angler if you mind if you fish, you know, maybe in a different little spot in that area. But you're not gonna just run up in there and get on top of somebody. Now, to, to get to further approve, to further talk about that, which is an important thing. If it's day two of a tournament or day three of a tournament, or better yet, day four of a tournament, like I had happened to me one time, and you've been fishing that exact spot or area for all those days and you're doing well in a tournament, and then an angler decides to just show up the morning of day three or four that hasn't been there at all, that would be considered unethical. That would be considered like that's not cool. Like, <laughs> like you would need to give you would you need to concede that. 
And so that, that is something to, but again, first day of the tournament, it's kind of like, you know, it's nobody's spot on the first day of the tournament because it's, it's just a spot, you know what I mean? It's where everybody's wanting, or it's where that, multiple people are wanting to fish. So that's the deal, Drew Benton. Yeah, that comment. That it, yeah. This guy commented and said, oh, thanks, Tyler Hoover, for $5. I just want to know where your experience was. And how, I want to know your, how your experience was in Arkansas this year. He's asking me that? Yes. So my experience at Beaver Lake this year was, I would say, one of, one of the events that I didn't make good decisions on, okay? I, I missed some fish that would have helped me tremendously, but I also made some bad decisions on, or let me say this, I also made some hard-headed decisions. And what, what is a hard-headed decision? I'll give it to you real quick. In practice, last day of practice, I started throwing a wacky worm. Last day of practice. I had a lot of bites. Then we have a day off. It rains, the water comes up three or four feet. First day of the tournament, I go out, what do I throw? Wacky worm. All right, then the next day goes by, the water comes up even more. Changes, obviously, of conditions are completely changing. It's cold front conditions. All these different things going on. I go out on day two of the tournament, and what do I do? I throw a wacky worm. That is, retard that is retarded in my opinion. So I needed to uh, fish the conditions, and that's how I like to fish. I like to fish conditions. So Beaver Lake wasn't pleasant to me this year, but it was a good lesson or a good reminder of how I like to fish tournaments because you can make those mistakes where you get too dialed in on something and you don't make adjustments. Now, after the tournament was over, I fished in a charity event and literally just went mm. out and went fishing. Thank you, Mindset Foosball, for the $2. Oh, you're and, getting money? And Terry Mitchell. All Michelle right. or Mitchell? I don't know which one is it. $10. Well, if it's a last name, it's probably Mitchell. Oh, Garrett Herndon. $20. Where can what? I buy a, buy a Team Martin shirt at? All right. Well, also, would you... We're going to have that coming real soon. I promise you. Also, would like to ask Scott who would be a good guide for Okeechobee. I'll be down there in November. Look up Captain Dave. He's got a YouTube channel called The Guide's Life, and you can check that out on YouTube. And uh, he's a, he'd be a good one, you know. Or just call our marina, Roller Martin Marina. We got a, a bunch of good guides there as well. So Thank you, good. Redneck Pride, for five dollars. Dude, you. you're banking right now. These guys are awesome. Man. Thank you, Jeff Holman. Five dollars. All right. All right, this Cade. said he'll give us 50 if we slide down one of these slides. <laughs> oh, dude. Here, you mean to film you? No. For 50 bucks? Really? Offset slide? Can I get the 50? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll film you. Go ahead. That'd be Man, awesome. I got a fish later today. I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you, Hick, for $10. Thank you. Oh. Oh, oh watch it. Come in. At, oh. oh, God. I'm up on top of the houseboat. I just like, ooh. They're asking if you're gonna come to California. Oh no, here, film that. That's, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's the same fish right there. Ooh. What do you, will you give me a pound on that fish, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> I can give you one ounce. Oh, thank you, Indiana, uh, Indiana <laughs> Steelhead and Salmon. It just goes dot, 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 after. If you're that's ever near about. Northwest Indians, let, let's go fishing. Let's just take Indiana. a moment. Appreciate this bass and everything it's worth. Mm. Which is all. I'm glad I didn't it's a giant. Fish big fish on the Mississippi River with mega hammer. I'm glad I didn't put that in the title. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost to co angler in a tournament? I think they're like 600 bucks on FLW on the tour. Thank you, M R K I N G A A 1, for $5. You're killing it. You're killing it. Brandon needs to read Braille. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, I went out on day on the last time we finished that part of it. I went out, I went out and fished a charity tournament after Beaver Lake. Oh, dude, look, we got a spinner bait up there. Look at that. There's a spinner bait. Uh-oh, what do you got? Oh! What happened? Dang! 
Is that a good one? Ah, I would have been leading the tournament. He was maybe 16 inches. Really? Yeah, it was a smallie. It was that fish that you missed. You kind of gave up on her. Sitting on that bed right there. You see the bed? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I see the bed. Yep. I blew it. I'll let you, I'll let you fish for that one. Happy birthday, Logan. Uh oh, uh oh. That's definitely gonna take the lead oh, if you can get thank, it down. Thank you again for the extra five dollars, M R K I N G A A one. It's not even that big. Pretty good one. You know what? Just gonna suck it up. Let's get in here, buddy. Oh, look! Oh, right on my camera bag. That's nice. Oh, great. That's Brandon. You love that, Brandon? It's great. Now you, so now your whole bag's gonna smell like a fish. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you a dollar or something. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All right. Can you give me a pound and three quarter on that fish? Yeah, it's almost two. Two. I'll give you two pounds. Two That's pounds. Right. Two pounds. Mega Hammer's got a two pounder. That's pretty good. He saw that fish. He saw that light spot. And and here's the deal, guys. There's these aren't like real super obvious beds. It's just a little bit of a light spot there. If you look around, you need a good pair of polarized glasses. And when you go up here, you just kind of look and look and look. And when you see a lighter area, just a lighter sandy area, a lot of times that's what these fish are using for beds. They're just, that's, it's not much of a big giant circle or anything. It's just a light spot right there. This poor fish, uh -oh. you can see she's been... Oh, oh gosh, dude. She's been, a she's been caught a time or two, I believe. She's got some hook holes in her. Hmm. Back to make some babies. Or guard some babies. I just had one and I, I had to. Now where was that at? I had a weird. It was right there. Thank you, Cameron <laughs> Melson. If you have a fish dying online on the way in, on the way to weigh in, does it still count towards total weight? Yeah, you get a penalty, a dead fish penalty. That's negative weight. That's negative weight. Billy learned that ready, firsthand. Uh -oh. oh, dude. I, had, I flipped up there and had a backlash. Is he still on this? No, but throw up there because you're going to catch. I, I had a backlash. I was getting my line out, and I looked, and my line was just going, like, through the water. Like, that fish went far. Hang on that little uh, yeah. deal. Hey, thank you, Jeff, for the $20. Planning a trip to watch FLW in Potomac. 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 You bet. <laughs> I need this English major over here. <laughs> I wasn't an English major. Any but. suggestions for attending an FLW tournament for the first time? Come hang out with us. Usually that's better off during the weigh-ins towards the end. Dude, there's a fish there. Blast off is usually not too, too good. Blast off is too early for people to be getting out of bed. That was the craziest thing. Literally, I looked at my line, it was going like a 50 miles an hour, dude. It was just <laughs> they said they said for me to take the pole out of your hand and show you how to fish. <laughs> oh man. You need to. Center worm. Center worm did some damage yesterday on some pipe. Yeah, he was up on that oh, little gorgeous. little lay down thing. What is that, a boat ramp? Yeah, I think it's a little boat. Like deal. they pulled a boat up on that? Yeah. Probably a little, a little pin boat. All right, so here's, here's some information for you guys. So Cade, Cade lives up here in, on the Mississippi, and he's uh, won the BFL tournament two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah, And uh, He won that tournament. Tell him, tell him a little bit about it. Mega bag, by the way. Mega <coughs> hammer cut mega bag. Yeah, it was pretty much the best day of fishing I ever had on, on the Mississippi River in my life, and I'm out here all the time. It just so happen to happen in a tournament, so I don't know how you explain a day like that. I caught a 6-4 smallmouth. That also <laughs> never happens here on the river. Wow, um, huge pressure. But basically what really happened was there's a little perch. It had been really warm, kind of like it is now, and that got a lot of fish moving towards the backwaters to spawn. A lot of guys picked up on that. But then we had a massive cold front, and a lot of the fish that had made that migration came right back out to the main river. 
and I was catching this big fat pre-spawn smallmouth on a swim bait, uh, big bite bait, suicide shad, and uh, a lot of those guys, you know, like Scott talked about earlier, being hard-headed, they had seen the right bites in practice to win the tournament in that shallow water, and you know, something goes off in your head that says, well, there's a big cold front, but I'm still going to go shallow. You know, people make that mistake a lot. They, they go where they had bites. And they, the yeah, and that's what I did for that tournament, and it really worked out. So super happy with it, and on to the next one. Uh, I've, I've won a little over six grand, so. Because really? I won the Costa Award, and I won Big Bass as well, and we had, like, a record turnout oh. for boats. Thank you, James Craig. He's got one. Mega Hammer's putting the Mega Hurt on me right now. <laughs> I have a three-quarter pounder. Giants. He's not bigger than the other one. Well, now no. I'm never going to read your comment again, Logan. You <laughs> tricked us. It was not very close to Putting the Ned rig Where are damage we exactly on right now, Scott? We're, we're like right beside Fun in the Sun, ex houseboat, vacation. Fun in the Sun. That's where we are. <laughs> Wherever that is. Well, I think that that. Uh, but we're just up here in pool what, five. Pool five. We're in pool five. So we have the FLW tournament next week on pools what seven, eight, and nine. Yep. Is that right? Which is not part of this system here. It's the same river but it's not this body of water. So we can't fish up here in the tournament, can't practice up here or anything like that. So that's why I was able to come out here and fish. We're gonna be doing a cool thing tomorrow. Um, we're gonna be doing a charity event with Brian Robinson, plays for the Minnesota Vikings. And uh, myself, Brian, and a whole bunch of his teammates and some of the coaches, we're all gonna go out and uh, do a charity event tomorrow. And so people can be bidding on an opportunity to fish with me and, and a, bunch of other, a bunch of other pros that are donating their time, so it's going to be a pretty cool little deal. Looking forward to uh, hopefully jacking up a couple big smallmouth tomorrow. You'll have about seven and a half minutes. Really? Finish up the 30 minute challenge. Oh, better catch a two and a quarter, bud. <laughs> this guy's winning. That's right. I'm going to win this deal with a two pounder. How about that? Yeah. Hi, Dana. All right. <clears throat> we got to turn around somehow. <laughs> have much, much I have room. not gotten Scott to play disc golf yet. He keeps saying he will, but he never does. <laughs> we haven't had time yet. Thank you, but Violet. Violetta. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn around. Let's blaze out of here. Oh, I got to. Any advice for female anglers for tournaments, pro fishing? Um, got to turn around here, guys. Any advice for female anglers? Hey, you know what? Bass don't care what gender you are. They don't care what color you are. So Not just just way. get out there and um, fish hard, you know? Just fish hard, be serious, and um, try to learn as much as you can because at the end of the day, Fishing is all about learning as much as you can. So, you know, fishing, fishing these tournaments around the country allows you to gain knowledge and, and learn how different bodies of water, you know, kind of set up and fish because they all fish different. Like I've never fished the upper Mississippi River and it, you fish a little different up here. You know, it's all real super shallow. You fish a little slower. So it's, it's a little bit of a different deal. But just get out there on the water, fish as many tournaments as you can and um, try to learn as much as you can. No, I have not fished with our sizzle. What's up, Tyler? Thank you, Sean Price. All right, let's start the big motor up and idle around. Yeah. Here, let me see it. I'm gonna film Brandon now. No. Oh yes, there's Brandon, yes. Hi, Brandon. Yes. Bro, oh, gosh, don't oh. fall out of the boat. All right. You all right? I yeah. still he didn't learn from the first that time. Dude. That G2. G2, baby. As soon as I kick it into gear, it wants to go. She wants to party. <laughs> all right. 
And that's the river, well, it's not the river, that's a little back channel, but the main river's on the other side. And uh, pretty cool place up here. Pretty cool place. What's up? All right. And this is just a little place that has docks. I mean, you don't need the docks, but there's just good, pretty decent depth right there. It's not like too shallow out. It's like four feet deep in this little area, but then it's real shallow up right there on the bank itself. And that's what you want. You pull in these places that are super shallow, 30, 40 feet out from the bank, you're not probably gonna catch as many smallmouth. You still catch some largemouth up there, but. Ooh, look at that spot right there, looks good. We're gonna go down here and go around the corner. All right, so I'll check out Brandon's new camera. It's like, it's like a Christmas present for him right there. You all wanna see the unboxing. Uh, check out the Instagram. <laughs> this is my baby oh, now. Oh, Brandon's been hitting the gym. That's what they're asking, dude. You got your guns showing today. Yeah. <laughs> I think the jury's still out on that question. Oh, yeah, you do need some sunscreen, bro. They're all saying that uh, you're looking a little rednecky. Oh, is this the ramp? Oh, fish it yeah. Up How, what's the other way to get in there? You got to go down and around? Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. Well, so far, Mega Hammer is putting the Mega Hurt on me. <laughs> We're going to change that right here. Lauren said to tell you <laughs> hi. Hi, Lauren. That's Lauren my girlfriend. Girl? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, Lauren, isn't that your, your sweet? Boy, your, boy, your boy's putting a smack down on me right now. Brian Christensen said, tell Cade to put the sissy rod away. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'll vote for that. <laughs> and he gave $5. I mean, Come on, BC. And he gave five bucks? That yeah. Definitely got to put that up. <laughs> This guy says his name's JT, and he wants to know if you know Michael Metz. He was my tennis coach. Oh, yeah, Michael Metz and I went to school together, for sure. He does know him. There you go. All right. All right, so here's the time of the video. Let's get some good, serious fishing questions, okay? Appreciate all the support, guys, and all the comments, but let's, let's, let's get some good fishing questions. You have, like, two and a half minutes left. Well, here's the deal. We can always extend it until I catch a bigger fish. <laughs> Isn't that cheesy? Oh boy. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, there was one there. Scott, explain to these people again what your sunglasses are. All right, these, these are Costas, and the, the model Costas are called Black Fin. These are Black Fins, and it's Green Mirror. Polarized. It's a, yeah, polarized. Green Mirror, polarized. They have a Blue Mirror. Uh oh, he's got another one. Giant. Look at that. Man. What is Giant. That? Oh fan? my gosh. Oh yeah. It's a ski bass. <laughs> what is the deal with these little buggers? I don't know. They're biting. All right, so here's what we're doing, guys. This week, I'm going to give you a little update on some cool things we got coming down the pipe. Um, first, we're going to be filming another episode tomorrow on that charity tournament so that video we've also been shooting one today that'll post next week with Cade and we actually caught some really nice ones earlier today so that video is coming down the pipe then we have the travel video posting in a couple days getting up here and I took Brandon fishing and he caught a lot of fish you can't I mean I'm telling you it's hilarious <laughs> hilarious he jacked them up and then we've got the tournament stuff going and the practice videos coming so this next week is going to be really I think a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe so be sure to turn your notifications on so you'll get the little reminders when they uh, when they pop up. No, so this dock goes. Oh, thank you, Cheston. We hunt for fifty dollars. What? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, man. Can if you get to the end of this, can you turn and go back up it, or is it all can't? I don't know. I think you can't because there's little dock crossings there. It's been a long time since I came up this section. This thing is going but at the top of there, it's 
looks yeah. like a little better. I'm trying to hurry, guys, and get down. We've kind of lost our bank because this gigantic 200 yard long dock. Three minutes is up in four, three, two. Are you serious? That's it. No way. All right, so here's the deal. You won. You won the challenge. You won the challenge. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mark. Biggest tournament I've won in the last two weeks. Yeah. You know how much money you get for this one? Mm, nothing. Nada. You get nothing. I might, I'll, I'll buy you lunch, though, for sure. But we are going to extend it just a few minutes. He won He won the challenge because I've been trolling motoring for about 150 yards here trying to get past this dock. Thank you, Jeremy. Fish Fox. that little area Fox. there. What is the best lure to use when you are fishing around trees and running streams? Best lure to fish on streams around trees and stuff, right? Is that what you asked? Yeah. You know, obviously something really weedless because if you don't have something really weedless and there's a lot of running water, then your bait is going to get hung up a lot by drifting down underneath roots and tree limbs and stuff. So a Texas rig like I'm flipping right now is really really good oh my gosh look at this thing right here i can't believe you let me fish right there i can't believe it it's on the bank oh yeah but that's what you want something really texas rig creature bait thank you matt parv oh. you ever take your wife fishing i do i do we did a show actually down in miami we caught some big peacock bass. That show air is airing on NBC Sports. Set your DVR. That's right. Oh, I see something pretty amazing. Dude. I see something. The challenge is over, bud. <laughs> oh, no. What is the best lure for a newbie to use? I'm in Iowa waters. Definitely a spinner worm. Spinner worm. Yeah, huh? spinner worm. He's for from sure. Iowa, isn't that all they throw in Iowa? Is white spinner baits? Is that a worm on the Colorado really blade? <laughs> no, spinner bait is a good lure to throw because it's it's pretty weedless. You can throw it a lot of places. And um, small mouth and large mouth, you know, like it. Watch this, right here. Oh my god. This is this is back boating one oh one folks. There it's like the toy angler where he can't cast over the top. Yeah, that's a spinner rod. It's all right. I'm going to sneak in underneath here and get a four pounder. It looks really juicy, though. I can't yeah. believe we didn't get hit like that. We picked the. You know, you probably could slide a boat back there. For sure. That'd be a good tournament move. What color worm works best for your spinner worm? <laughs> Anyone that's laying on the bottom of your boat. That's right. That's how it worked the first time. Com what combo are you using? For me? Yeah. I'm using a Daiwa Chrono spinning rod. And I've got just a generic little spinning reel on this one. I'm mostly using all Daiwa stuff. You got rigged up with braid, right? Yeah, I've got 24 pound Sunline braid on here. And then I've got just uh, 12 pound. Sunline fluorocarbon leader material. Nothing real fancy. I'm a river rat. Spinning poles don't really find their way into my lineup too often. Except for when I got a fish behind Scott Martin. I think, thank you, DK Outdoors. He says you need to, to challenge Matt Airy and or Brian Thrift to our biggest bass challenge at Moss Lake in Shelby, North Carolina. I like that. How's the fishing on Moss Lake in like June? Is it good? Mm -hmm. But see, that's the one that I think Brian, they win all their tournaments on all the time. Nobody can beat Brian. Oh, yeah. Got a little tiny one, like eight inches long. I'm from the Lee Summit area. All right, guys. Well, this little video here went off without anybody falling in. Thank you, George Smith. So again, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, watching what we're doing. Uh, we're going to keep doing more of these live. We've, we've got some good opportunities coming up for some more live stuff. We're going to come up with some creative little challenges. And um, drop some comments below. Give me some good ideas. Give me some good challenge ideas on some fun stuff to do and some good people to challenge.
I think that would be awesome. So we're going to get back to fishing, see what happens. So thanks for watching. And again, Cade, dude, awesome hanging out with you. You did good. It's been a pleasure. Beat me with a two pounder. That's right. Yeah. That's what you're special right there. But uh, we'll see you guys. I appreciate it so much. We're gone. See ya.